Hey folks, this is Brent Easton with Easton Farms. I'd like to welcome everybody back to the channel. Thanks to all the new subscribers for subscribing and watching the videos. As I mentioned in the Red Pole cattle update yesterday, I think we're, I think we're up to 110 subscribers as of this morning. So I'd like to express my appreciation for everybody that's subbed. And if you haven't subbed, please do like the videos and feel free to comment to enjoy visiting with everybody in the comment section so happy to be able to share this journey with the livestock and the crops and stuff with everybody and not really done anything with the crops yet but that's upcoming on the channel so we've had kind of a rough year so far for crop stuff it's been pretty wet and cool so. but as we get further into May and June the crop stuff's going to ramp up so it's it's upcoming just stay patient <laughs> so yeah update on the sheep this morning since uh, I did the cattle update yesterday uh, so far we've had 11 lambs hit the ground this year um, in May and we had the seven that hit the ground in February so um, 2021 total for lamb count is at 18 and I think we just just cleared 40 animals in the flock the other day with those so I think we may be a few animals past that now I, I'll have to look at the records and count everybody again but I don't have that number immediately in my head so that's close enough for the time being but, uh, yeah the lambing season's gone really good uh, no no major problems at all I had one the other day that she didn't drop lambs last year didn't breed and uh, so she dropped a pair of lambs the other day on a really cold raw morning and wet we'd had storms that night cold front came through and she had a little trouble with that first lamb coming out but uh, I gave it some very very subtle encouragement <laughs> and uh, everything was was good so the second one came right on out and was healthy and everybody was good but uh, that's actually that's the second one that was born and I think I think that's the first one that was born so they're both doing really good had a little trouble getting them to to get a meal from her she was bagged up and tight and really sore so I've had two do that so far one last year and one this year and the best thing that I found to do with those and, and I don't think it's all that uncommon and I think probably a lot of times people think a you is rejecting her babies and I don't think it's that I think it's just that she swelled up and sore and so what I've done both in both cases is just hand milked her out and it's a bit of a <laughs> wrestling match to hold that you, especially if you're here by yourself like I was that day. But to hold her and get her milked out until she softens up. But once that udder softens up, in both cases they've been perfectly good. She'd stand and let them eat as long as they wanted to. So I'm just happy that, that I was able to figure out a solution <laughs> for both of those. Didn't have bottle lambs to take care of so yeah 18 lambs on the year total and everybody's healthy and doing good and I think we've got like eight years left to go <laughs> good animals <laughs> I think it's time for baby to eat <laughs> mama come here I'm hungry Yep, we get to watch his little tail work here. Oh, yeah, it's time for the other one to eat too. <laughs> oh, they're cute. That's fun. So anyway, yeah, the dogs are doing good. The puppies are doing really good. Well, and it's a little bit breezy all at once up here. So I'm trying to keep this bone shielded a little bit from the wind here. Some puppies are growing and doing really well. And 
I finally decided on a, on names for them the other day. Um, I've been letting them out for a walk every day when I come over and move fence, sometimes twice a day. And I don't know for whatever reason, they're the names that I like just popped in my head, so I named them Boone and Crockett. <laughs> and they, those names seem to have stuck. So, all of us around, around on site know them as Boone and Crockett now. So. <laughs> I've always admired Daniel Boone and Davy Crockett. And uh, one of my deer hunting goals has always been to take a Boone and Crockett caliber buck, and so that name, those names just stuck and seemed to fit really well. So I really like those. So I dub the Boone and Crockett and introduce you to the world. <laughs> so yeah, I think that's the last update that I've, last bit of news I've got to update on the sheep and the dogs. I have been working lately for the last oh, couple of months to acquire enough uh, poly braid and step in post that as we rotate around my goal is I'll set up a new paddock and I've got enough materials and if I don't have enough on hand I'll I get more as, an, as needed but I'll set up a paddock we'll graze it out and then I'll move on and I don't take that paddock up you know I'll pull a if I've got a division fence set up in it, I'll pull that and rewind that up and pick the posts up. But eventually as we rotate around and I set up new paddocks and leave that paddock and move on, set up a new one, by the time I reach the end of our rotation, um, we'll have all the paddocks semi-permanently set up and ready to go. So it's a major time sink for me to set up new perimeter fencing for every paddock as we go and it's a pretty major expense the all the i just use the cheap plastic step-in post from from the from the local farm stores as i mentioned before in the cattle video but uh, it's still for as many feet linear feet as fences is required for rotational grazing on this many acres it's still a major expense but um, in most cases I can afford that more than than the extra time it takes to pull all that up and redeploy it every time so my goal is to eventually get everything set up in a, on a semi-permanent uh, semi-permanent deal and all I'll have to deal with is just division fences within the paddocks and I can roll those up and redeploy them as needed pretty easily within a few minutes, so it's not too big of a deal. But that'll save me a lot of time, and and for those following along, wanting to do this in the future or working at it, you know, it's kind of a common sense thing. The more more fence you already have out, the less time it takes to deal with it. So, but where I'm, I am still clipping pasture. Um, I haven't done so yet this year, but over time as I need to do that, the semi-permanent nature of the poly and the post, you know, all I've got to do is just move it over and trim that out, and if I want to move it back, it'd be fine, but um, even with the animals grazing the fence lines, all I've got to do is move that fence line over a little bit, let everybody graze it out, deal with it, and then move the fence back. So it's a major time gain for me to do it that way. And anybody that's wanting to rotational graze animals, you know, take note that eventually that might be a goal that you'd want to work, work towards. Um, whether you've got five acres or 5,000, it really doesn't matter. It's a, uh, it's a huge time saver so I'm sure no matter what scale you're on <laughs> five minutes is five minutes or five hours is five hours so. 
as you as you grow you'll appreciate more and more of the time savings so anyway well I'll check this video and see how bad the wind noise is on it before I post it <laughs> since I don't always do that but anyway I've got stuff to do and need to get going on here puppies are getting noisy so I'm gonna leave this video off here and I'll talk to everybody later y'all take care have a good day bye bye